Good evening, friends, and welcome to the final science night of the season. Oh my gosh, super sad, but that's okay because we are already gearing up and planning the 2021 22 science night season. So, wait for that. Um, so, oh, welcome again. My name is Miss Casey. I'm from your Leroy Collins Leon County Public Library System. I am your librarian. So, if you have any questions to ask about the library, just let us know. We have Miss Yulia, wonderful Yulia, my scientist from <laughs> Mag, FSU's Mag Lab here with you guys tonight, and Mr. Carlos. Uh, as our moderator. So he will be breaking in with your questions. So if you have any questions, type them in the chat and we're more than happy to get them to Yulia. So we are gonna be talking about optical illusions tonight, which I just said, Miss Yulia is my scientist and oh my gosh, this is my favorite, 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 favorite topic of the season. So without further ado, Miss Yulia, take it away. Thank you, Casey, so much for the introduction and welcome everybody to the last science night of the season. We are so excited to have you all here tonight for Optical Illusions and uh, to share some insights about how scientists go about doing their experiments. Um, and um, we're excited to have you and we have a list of hands-on activity supplies on here. So um, if you haven't gathered them yet, have a look around the house uh, for a piece of paper. Um, uh, grid paper might be uh, extra useful, but any type of paper will really work. If you don't have a clean piece of paper, an envelope will do as well. Um, a ruler, pencil, sticky tape, and scissors. So um, let's jump right into it. Okay, before we get going, um, let's start our first poll session and make sure that you guys can hear us, that you guys found the chat box. Um, we also would like to know a little bit about you. How old are you? Who is out there? Uh, who are we talking to? And we are also super interested to see where you guys are from. So if you can um, answer to the poll, let us know if you can see and hear us okay. If you can't hear us, maybe you have to turn your volume up. Um, if you uh, haven't found the chat box yet, it may be in a bar on the top or bottom, depending on what type of device you have and what device you're on. Um, sometimes you have to click on the three little dots uh, to get to the chat box. So uh, please go ahead and check if you can find that. Um, and then we'd also like to know your age so that we have an idea who all is out there that we're talking to. All right, I see that a little more than half of you have already answered, so we give it a little bit more time on that. I was just going to give you that exact update just <laughs> as you said it. So, okay, uh, we're that at thirteen out. out of seventeen, and we got one person from outside of the USA. If you want to tell us where you're from, type it into the chat box, please. That is so exciting. All right, as still some of the votes are coming in. Um, I think I'll start to summarize that most of us can see or hear us okay. There's one person who can't see or hear us okay. Try to find the volume on your uh, device and turn that up. Um, we hope that that will solve the problem. Everyone found a chat box, that's amazing. And then in terms of age, we have one person under the age of four. Uh, we have three of you that are four or five. Um, one person, six or seven, three of you, eight or nine, five. So a lot of you are 10 or 11, one between 12 and 14, and one person that's older than 18. Welcome to you all here. Most of you are from the Tallahassee area. So yay, Tallahassee. And you can probably all make it to Miss Casey's library. So that's exciting too. And we have one person from outside Florida and outside the US. We are super excited to have you all. Did we Trey, learn? We've yes. got one guest joining us today from Turkey, where if I'm not mistaken, it is late, late night out there. So happy almost Friday. That is so exciting. We're excited to have you all. That is amazing. All right. So um, let's move from here. And today, um, we as scientists from the Mag Lab would like to share with you how scientists explore the world. 
and what methods scientists use to go about exploring the world. So if you have any ideas about that, type them in the chat box. How do scientists figure out what they want to figure out? And how do they think about the things they want to figure out? Any idea of what scientists do when they start thinking about their questions, their experiments, what do they do? Any ideas out there? I'm waiting for them to come in, but I will share with you my favorite question that I get from students when I ask them that same question. Um, they always ask me, they're very concerned about our job security, and they want to make sure that we're not going to run out of questions to ask. Okay, that is cute. I love that. That is really nice. They always uh, say, do you worry that you're going to run out of things to learn? I'm like, I promise you, we will not. Right. And actually, one thing I always realize is the more I learn about something, the more questions I have. And that's exactly the way it is. You get an answer and you get three or four or five more questions out of that one answer. So once again, everybody, um, you don't need to raise your hands. Just type your answers into the chat box and I will read them out, starting with the first few that we've gotten so far. Um, they say scientists explore. They ask okay. lots of questions. They study things. Um, they explore again. That's awesome. So thinking about this a little bit more, we have a little bit of a fancy term for the way we go about um, working in, sci in science. We call it the scientific method. And as you guys said, we start with a question. Uh, we ask ourselves, what do I want to learn about this? I wonder what happened if I did that. Why does this work this way? How come that this is like this? And then what we do is we say, hey, I think probably things are going to be like this. So this is what we call in a fancy word, a hypothesis. And then as scientists, we go about testing this and we check out if our, uh, of if, you know, what the, as, oh, what the answer is to our question and if our hypothesis, so our assumption of what the answer will be is correct. And we do our experiment. And as we do our experiment, we take lots of notes and we watch what's going on. And then, you know, we go back and we're like, okay, here's what we saw. Let's analyze, let's check out what, what we did and what our measurement showed us. And then when we're done, sometimes we have an answer and sometimes we have more questions than, than we had to start with. And we go out there and we share our results. So I go to Carlos and say, hey, Carlos, look what I just found out. <clears throat> then I get to take that information and bring it to all the schools and everyone else. Um, one thing that I saw in the chat box that I hear a lot too is they say that scientists work with potions and they blow up potions. <clears throat> um, and while that is not wholly incorrect, that's not fully correct either. Um, potions isn't exactly the term we like to use. We call them chemicals <clears throat> or um, materials or elements or compounds. Um, but yeah, sometimes we mix compounds together and we see how they react together. Yeah, so I want to start with one experiment <clears throat> with you guys. And for this, I ask Mr. Carlos to let me borrow these two little black spheres. And I won't really say a lot more about them because I would like to ask you guys to work through the scientific method. So seeing these two, <clears throat> excuse me, two balls, what do you guys want to know about them? What questions could we ask about these two spheres? Type your questions in the chat box and let's see where this experiment is going. Any ideas? What could we ask about these two? <clears throat> so let's start with the question. What do we want to learn about these two? What could we ask about them? Yulia, they want to ask how much do they weigh? Okay, good. That's a really good question. The mass well, is a property of objects, so that's really good. Next, they want to know what they're made out of. Okay, that's a good one. I love that how they react with fire. Okay, nice. Can we make them react? That's a good one, yes. Do they bounce? All right. Oh, what does their texture feel like? 
Okay. All right, that's a good one. Okay, um, I asked this exact same question to a scientist and here is his experiment. All right, did this give us any answers to our questions? <clears throat> did we find out anything about the questions that you guys answered, that you guys asked in the chat? Julia, while they were watching the video, some more questions came in. They wanted to know, and this makes complete sense, are they magnetic? Okay, that's a good one. Yes, I actually tried that out yesterday with one of my fridge magnets. <clears throat> and I can tell you that they are not. And I what? agree with you 100%. So um, what they are realizing from this is that they said um, one bounces. They are not close, not really bouncing. Yes, it can bounce. Not magnetic. And they've observed that they won't attract to each other, which is true. That's right. And we saw that this one, you might not be able to see it, but you can hear it. It bounces real nicely. And this one makes a nice little plop. I think there was also someone that asked how much they weigh. Now, this scientist didn't check how much they weigh, but I saw him go like this. So um, that I think was pertaining to see like, hey, which one, his question must have been similar. Like which one is heavier? Well, seeing as how you borrow them from me, I can't answer that because I have weighed them before and they are very close, but one is a little bit heavier than the other. I would also like to answer to the texture question. So uh, this one, this is, this is the bouncy one. It feels a little bit more um, sticky and rubbery. And then we have this one, which is the, the plot one. Um, it is uh, a little bit more smooth. So even though they look very similar and I'll bring them really close to you guys, they look, I mean, on first sight, if they put them, if you put them down, I cannot see a difference between them. Um, they look very similar. And even though they look so similar, they have very different properties. So um, you may have noticed that we just went through the entire scientific method. We ask a question, we had hypotheses, we thought, okay, they look the same, but are they really? So we checked. So we went through the experiment and then we analyzed our results and then we shared them with one another. So we just went through the whole scientific method and at the Mag Lab and anywhere else in the world where people do experiments, they will do the very same thing um, and follow this method independent on how complex and how big the experiments are. Everything can be broken down into lots and lots of questions and each question is figured out in the same way. All right, moving on, I want to mention that we often say seeing is believing. However, I would like to um, ask you guys to think about this and maybe at the end of this, uh, this evening we come together and we figure out what we, what we think is true. Is seeing believing or can seeing possibly also be deceiving? And working up from there, I would like to ask you guys to write in the chat box what you think the covered writing here says. What does this say? What does it say back there? Okay. I don't want to read out the answer just yet. They are typing it in and I will just say that every answer we've gotten has been in agreement, um, but I don't want to say it yet. Okay, all right. So let's see what happens if we uncover a little bit more. Any more answers, any more insights? I see a lot, lots of you are consistent with one another. I think you all agree on what it says. All right, let's uncover a little bit more. Okay. Still lots of, lots of agreement on what it says. All right, let's look at this. What do you think it says now that we have done more and more of our experiment and 
peeled back more and more of the information to see what's covered there. I think they're stumped because they are mostly quiet. I, I just got one answer of the popular misspelling of science as it looks up there. Great. Um, but yeah. And that tells us something really interesting about our brain and how our brain works. Because our brain is really uh, uh, a little machine that likes to uh, jump to conclusions. So... Um, <laughs> You, what, yeah, somebody in the chat box says this would make a great Wi-Fi password, and I have to agree with them. <laughs> that is a good one. Yes, yes, that's a good one. So our brains, our brains take in information, and our brains are programmed in a way to preserve energy and get to the answer as quickly as possible. So what our brain does is, based on things that we have learned previously and seen previously, we like to complete the picture in our mind. And that's exactly what happened here. So let's try this again. What do you guys think is hidden behind this black bar? What do we see? What does the writing say? And it got quiet out there. Well, I think you've warned them well, but the answers are starting to come out and they are getting clever. They uh, so so I will spoil this a little bit because they are typing in my cup of tea, mm -hmm. um, but they are using creative misspellings for some of those letters. Okay, so what do we think now? Are we still having a cup of tea? Let's hear it. Let's type it in. All right, he didn't. Yeah. Someone is still on my cup of tea. I haven't gotten anything different yet. Um, I did have, oh, here we go. Uh, I, I can't read them. They're not words now. So we've got MV Cub Oetifa, my Chur Oetifa, my Chur of <laughs> Tea, Mixtipa. I, I, I can't. All oh, right. Well, I guess I'll give it away altogether. And I think this one is an even more exciting example of how our brain can turn into my cup of tea. So, um, yeah, that is uh, that is how our brain works. And <clears throat> this is, excuse me, how the scientific method can help us figure out what is really going on, which is not always exactly what our eyes tell us. All right, so I would say seeing can also be deceiving and um, that just just be keep that in your mind as we keep on looking through uh, a couple of pictures. And I would like to ask you what you guys see. Please type it in the chat box. What are we showing in this picture? What do we have here? Again, I don't want to say anything to give it away or to skew the answers that are coming in because that's another thing about science. I don't want to bias the sample. Um, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to wait one more minute before I start reading these in. But uh, Yulia, you can see these too, and they are what I think you would think that they are. Right. Yes. Yes. So... Um, I would like to um, ask people to look at this area and then maybe have a look at this area and move your eyes this way and see what you see now. So it's been a while, so I'm going to go ahead and say that first thing I saw was a rabbit. Yes. What about yes. you? So uh, when I first look at it, I see a duck. So I see the beak of a duck and I see its eye here and the head and the neck here. But then as I look and I maybe start looking at it more from the right side, I see, uh, I see a rabbit, just as you said, with the eyes, the eye here, the ears here and a cute little nose up front. All right, let's try this again and check out this one. What do you guys see? What do you guys see in this picture? 
Also a lot going on, black and white. What do you guys see there? That's one of my favorites because it is so tricky. Okay. Um, hmm. I don't want to say again. I don't want to tell them what I see or what they see. Um, but I, the first answer I saw was something that I don't even see at all. Oh, I see it now. Oh, okay. C can we start giving the answers? Yes, please. All right. What do you guys think? The first thing that came in was a heart. A heart. Yeah, I can see that. I never saw until somebody mentioned that. Now, a lot of them are see a woman's face, a man playing a saxophone, a guy playing sax, a really big head, a broken <laughs> mask. Um, a few of them have no clue. They're not able to see a picture there, which is perfectly legit too. Um, the broken mask, they see the man, they see a blotch. <laughs> this is really hard. They see a woman's face. Um, Yuli, I'll tell you that I saw the saxophone player first, but I am a saxophone player, so I could be skewed towards that too. That's right. So maybe for those that haven't seen it, um, there, if you look at the black first, at the black, um, um, contours, you would see a head here with a nose, and this is a cool hairdo here. This is the back of the person, the feet, and then here is maybe the saxophone that this person is playing. Now, if you look at the white part here, you could see a woman's face with eyes here and a nose and a mouth. So um, there's both hidden there. So that's, that's quite interesting what your, uh, your brain makes of that. All right, what do you guys see here? What do we have here? I'm curious to see what you guys can make out there. Okay, I see the answers coming in. Again, there's this a lot of- This is becoming a lot easier for a lot of people because they're giving us both answers at the same time. Right. Yeah. And it's also sometimes it takes a little bit to get for the brain to get into the groove of looking at these kind of pictures. So, uh, Carlos, what are we seeing? I will tell you that we have here um, polar bear, followed okay. by seal and polar bear, seal and polar bear, seal and polar bear, polar bear and seal, otter and polar bear, seal and polar bear. Otter and polar bear hugging. Oh, I like that one. Polar, <laughs> that bear, and, polar bear and see. Oh, a salamander on the mountain. Oh, wow. I hadn't even gone that far back, but I see it now. <laughs> um, an otter on top of a polar bear or a white dog. And, yeah. Yeah, that was very good. Awesome. All right. I got another one. This one is very famous. What do we see here? What do we see here? This one is very tricky, at least for my brain. This one is a tricky one to see. Hmm, what does this picture show? What do we have here? They're starting to come in. And again, we're getting the, the, um, the mixed answers where people are seeing two, three things now, things that I never even thought of are coming in which just shows to, goes to show you the importance of perspective. So right. um, the first answer was a girl with a hat. All right, so. Followed by pretty girl or old lady, followed by okay. a cat on her hat and a woman with a strange eye on her ear, a distracted woman's face, a goblin on the hat. I don't even see the goblin. Um, an old lady, a girl looking sideways. Yeah, so for those uh, who are struggling to see it, there is a, a girl looking sideways. Yeah, as you can see her head kind of from the backside. So this would be her eyes, nose, and her chin, her neck, wearing a funny hat. And if you look at it like straight ahead, you would see an old lady's eye and mouth here. So uh, with a kind of awkward nose up front. So yeah, this is a really tricky one too. And, and I like Carlos's comments about the perspective because in science, um, we do this a lot at the Mac Lab, but really all over the world, there's not a lot of science that's done by one person. 
So um, we need everybody's perspective and a lot of people will see working together, will see a lot more and learn a lot more and discover a lot more than, than a person by themselves. So with us as the Science Night uh, participants here, we can discover much more than by ourselves. All right, so let's check this one out. What do you guys see here? This is a video and I have a still picture of this one as well. So um, have a video here. What is it that we're seeing? Also, what is it that we're moving on? What are we seeing here? What is it that we are seeing here? We saw the same thing moving in the little movie. Again, it's all about perspective, Yulia. I've got answers of things that I would have never considered, including a pawn in chess. Yes. Um, a pipe, a strange sink. Um, a chess piece, two faces, people's heads, um, two people making contact. Yes. Um, somebody typed in toilet, very <laughs> fancy, odd shaped toilets, um, two faces looking at each other, a cup, um, two pieces, two people kissing, a lamp, mm -hmm. a table, an hourglass. Right. So um, this is a, a really uh, interesting one. So a lot of people see two people looking at each other or facing each other here. So we would have the noses here and the mouths here. Um, but if you focus on the white part and you consider um, the black areas, your background, you could see a cup or vase or trophy toilet, if you will. Um, so that's a uh, that's another good one here. Or birdbath. Um, we got birdbath too. Okay. Yeah, of course. Let's, uh, let's feed the birds. The birds. Okay. Um, all right. So um, I have another question for you. Which end of this bar is darker? And um, since I always have trouble with left and right, um, I, I just labeled the ends for everybody. <laughs> To figure out which uh, which end is darker, the left hand side or the right hand side. See that some of you are still answering, so let's give everybody a little bit more time here. We're not going to need much more time. The answers flew in this time. Good job, everybody. Um, All right. So let's look at the results, and I love this. It's perfectly even. Okay, which end of the bar is darker? So we're, we're perfectly uh, divided on this one. So let's check it out. And to check it out, I am going to strip away everything that is around the bar. <laughs> so I admit that was a trick question. <laughs> and maybe that's, that's why it was so divided. But yeah, it really, as Carlos said, it depends on the perspective and the surrounding what, um, what things look like. And there's another one, a video that I wanna show you guys. So let's look at this again. So to start, there's two squares and at least when the video starts, I've, that they are the same color. But then as we cast a shadow over top of it, our brain automatically assumes a different color for this. So this is really, uh, really insightful as to how our brain works. All right, I have another one. Are the horizontal lines here straight or sloping? And by the horizontal lines, I mean these. Are they straight or sloping? And I. I have a poll question for you guys, and we're talking about these lines. So are they parallel or are they sloping? What do you guys think? Mm -hmm. I'm curious to see what you guys think about that. Great, answers are flying in again. So let's see what you guys said. So seven said they are horizontal and parallel, and five of you said that they are sloping. So let's check this out. 
All right. So uh, just put in, oops, put in these um, lines here. And you can see that they are straight and parallel. So yay. Okay, let's move on to the next one. Oh, sorry. I also let's let's check that. So if we strip away again the other bars, you can see that they are perfectly horizontal. So uh, the stripping away is always a good way to double check. All right. So another question: How many black dots are there? Another poll question for you guys: How many black dots? Can you count on this image? Hmm, how many do we have? Curious to see what you guys have to say. Answers are coming in somewhat slower. I think everybody's counting. Yeah, I, I needed to count and then I need to stop and go back and count again. And then I had to start all over and count again. So, hmm. All right, let's end the poll here. Share the results. So we have six of you say there's more than six black dots, and four of you say there is none at all. All right. I typed into the chat box that it keeps changing from none to some. That's right. All right, so this one is really tricky to look at and to look at it. Um, as a scientist, we ask the question, how many black dots are there? And then we say, okay, we, we think there is more than none and maybe some, but it keeps on changing. So you built yourself an experiment. And the experiment I built is little boxes around the dots. And that makes it easier to look at every single dot because now you just have to look in the middle of the box and per box, you can confirm whether it's a white or a black dot. And then since I couldn't cover all in one go, let's take the next row. And if I'm looking at these individually, so far, all the ones that we put a box around were only white. And then we have a couple more. And um, if I keep looking at just the center of the boxes, and sometimes you have to close an eye all of the dots are white. So there was actually not a single black dot on that picture. All right, please type in the chat box. Do you see these wheels moving? Do you guys see these wheels moving? Are they moving? Are they stationary? Is there any movement? Is this a picture or is this a movie? What's going Poor chat on? Boxes. I've never seen this much confusion in the chat box, Julia. <laughs> and that's the topic today, optical illusions and what your brain will do to you. So I've got people typing in that my eyes are playing tricks on me. I, I've got, yes, they're moving. No, yes, no. <sighs> All right. Well, hold that thought while we look at this one. Are the dots moving? And for this one, we actually have a poll question. Are these dots moving? Curious to see. Okay. I think they're catching on to you. I think your 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 magic is wearing off. All right. Let's look at this. So the answer is no for eleven of you, and yes for four of you. All right. And as a scientist, you know we built ourselves an experiment, and I move a box down the image. And if you look into every single box, you can see that there's actually no movement there. So good job. And I also saw someone saying in the chat box that they are moving, but actually stationary. And I think this is a really amazing statement there because yes, your sensors, your eyes are taking the information in of something that's actually stationary but your brain, the way it processes, makes you think that it's something moving. So uh, that is a really uh, good observation scientist out there. That's awesome. All right, what do you guys see? Type your ideas in the chat box. 
What you guys see? First answer, they see a hole. A hole? Okay, what kind of geometrical forms do we see? We got swirls and lines together. We've got a spiral, an endless tunnel. Okay. Oh, a plaid wormhole. I love that. <laughs> All right, well, let's do a little experiment. So I just traced out these lines and had to go smaller and smaller until I couldn't do it anymore. Um, just wanted to show you that, yes, it really, for my brain, it really looks like a spiral, but if you actually trace them out, none of these circles are connected. So it's really a bunch of circles. This one is very similar. What do you guys see here? Do you see concentric circles? So circles that are inside of one another around the same center, or do you see a funky spiral? Keep in mind, this is very similar from the previous one. That might help you with the answer. Let's see what we got there. Okay, answers flying in, that's a good sign. You end this poll here and share the results. We hear lots of circles and a little bit of spiral. So good observation, if we trace out what we think is a spiral or what the brain shows us as a spiral, we actually end up with a bunch of circles. So here Julia, we go. I, I need to read to you what's in the, the chat box because they've, they've named this shape a splier instead of spiral or circle, just a splier. Um, okay, they I say love they, that. I, I like it too, I'm gonna, I'm gonna use that. Um, they see circles. They agree that the picture is very funky, which is an adjective we should use more often. And somebody else called it a distortion in space time. Okay. Or, or a nice wormhole. Okay, I like the spi sparkle too, yes. <laughs> yes, that is um, a, a, a splier, S-P-L-I-R-E, splier. Okay, all right. Um, this is very funky to... Uh, to my eyes. So uh, what do you guys see? When I look at it, I feel like I have to uh, move like this. <laughs> what is happening here? You, you've got me. I have no idea. What is happening here? But they've got some some guesses in the chat box. Squares in front of a spinning square. Uh, it's getting right. bigger while it's spinning. Mm -hmm. um, any other answers? Type them in. Well, we can work with that because we see um, the square growing bigger and spinning square. A, a white spinning gray square. Yes. And I have no idea. I'm completely stumped on this one. That is really a really good observation. So um, to my eyes, my brain, if I look at it, it looks to me like there is a white something that is growing bigger and that's coming at me. But what is actually going on, I think someone mentioned in the in the chat, Carlos, you just said that it's uh, it's little squares. And behind it is really, if you trace it out like this, it's just a white square. And just by means of turning and the way these are arranged, it looks like it's pulsing at you. And um, it makes use of your uh, brain playing a trick at you there. All right, before we go to our hands-on activity, I just wanted to say, a little bit of something about these optical illusions and what kind of processing unit we're working with up there. So um, for optical illusions, obviously we use a lot of our sight. So if we see something, a beautiful light ray hits like our little science night hero here, for example, the light bounces off of it and it, it uh, reaches our eyes. And then from our eyes, by our optical nerves an electrical signal is moved to the brain. And that's where you know we process the information and then 
we see the image. So here's the image of the little guy. However, just wanted to mention that it takes the brain about the tenth of a second to process that information. And that is really, really slow. So in a tenth of a second, so much can happen. Since our brain is so, so slow, we really have to focus on what we think is important. And with experience, our brain learns a lot of pattern recognitions. It learns a lot of things that it has seen before. So what it does, it makes predictions and it assumes things. And that's what optical illusions play off of, that you take a look and your brain's like, oh, I've seen that before. And it takes a conclusion. While in reality, maybe what you're seeing is not the case. All right, having said that, I would like to get everybody to get ready for their hands-on experiment. Again, we need a piece of paper. So I have some paper here, but white paper will do. If you don't have any paper, like normal standard paper with you, a used envelope will do, or um, a flyer that came in your mailbox. We also need a ruler and we need a pencil or a pen, some sticky tape and our scissors. Okay, and then let's go going here because today we are crafting a Mobius band and um, I will talk about that a little bit more in a second. Um, for now, I would like to suggest that we get going on this video where I'm showing you guys how to prepare a Mobius band and what to do with it. And you guys can craft along. And if there are any questions along the way, just type them in the chat box and I'll be walking you guys through this exercise. So let's get going here. We have all our supplies ready and we're going to craft a Mobius band. We take the piece of paper and a ruler and we get started. First, we take the ruler and I suggest that you measure about an inch and a half from the side of the paper. So 1.5 inches. And then you draw a line at 1.5 inches. And you take your scissors and you cut off a strip off paper that is one and a half inches wide. And then you take your ruler and you make another mark at half an inch. And you draw a line at half an inch. So now your uh, paper is divided in a way that there is one part that is twice as wide as the other part. And I'll show you that part again, because this is the tricky part. So you take the two ends, you put them together, but then instead of sticking them together like this, you turn over this part. All right, let's try this again. So you have your piece of paper, the strip, you put the ends together, but then you shift one part over. All right. Then you take your sticky tape and you take that thing together. Let me see if I can um, start the video again. Uh, Mr. Carlos, do I need to do that? Yes, you do. Okay. I, I I did turn it off so that we could see you working with the uh, the paper. So you can bring it right back up. Okay. Um, let me see. How is this? Can you guys see it? Looks good. All right. I think we were about here where we tape this together with the one and fold it over. Okay. And let's tape that up real good. So 
um, that those ends cannot come apart. I like to put a whole piece of sticky tape all the way around it. As you can see in the picture, I am sticking that together really well because we don't want it to come apart. All right, so before we do that step, I would like to ask everyone to take their Mobius band. So this structure is called a Mobius band and make a dot on it just anywhere. So I made a dot on mine here. And now let's take your finger and move along the side of the Mobius band and move and move and move and move. And I ended up at the dot again. All right, let's try that again. You follow along with your finger on the Mobius band. You never change sides. You never change sides. And all of a sudden, you end up in the same point again. And that is a really funky feature of a Mobius band because, you know, if we just put our strip of paper together like this and tape it up, and now I move my finger around, I don't cover both sides. I only cover the light blue side. And if I put my finger inside, I cover the, blue, the dark blue side. On the Mobius band, however, I can keep going, keep going, keep going, and I end up back with the dot again, which makes you wonder if it has one or two sides. So that is one of the interesting features of the Mobius band. All right, let's see if we can move from here again. Okay. Uh -huh. All right, and now that we've figured that out, um, we have our Mobius band, we stuck it together, and now is an interesting part. So now we find that line that we made at half an inch, and we start to cut along it. So you start to cut along that line, and you just keep cutting at about one third from the side of the Mobius band. And you just keep going and going and going until just like your finger traveled all the way around, also your scissors will end up in the same place again at the strip being cut into one side that is half an inch wide and the other side is an inch wide. And then once you get to that point, you open up the structure and I'll show it to you here. And it amazes me every time I do it, because all of a sudden you have a ring stuck on a ring. All right, let's do this again, but this time a little different. So prepare another strip. And I'll give you a second to catch up here. So let's prepare another strip. Again, we would like it to be um, an inch and a half wide. So take your piece of paper, measure an inch and a half from the side, make your dots, draw a line with the ruler, and then you cut it off. And that will result in a strip that is an inch and a half wide. So I'll give you a second here to catch up. So you cut that off as we just talked about. And then you take your strip and this time you make your mark in the middle. So at about three quarters of an inch and you draw a line. So now you have a piece of paper where the two sides are equally wide. And then we do the Mobius band trick again, ends together, flip it over and then stick it together really, really, really good. You want 
Do not want those ends to come apart. We do not want those ends to come apart. All right, so now the next step is to cut along this line that we just drew in the middle of this um, strip. And you just cut along that line. And then once the line ends, you just keep going in the middle of the strip. And if you do that, you end up with a structure that is just one piece. While previously, we ended up with a ring stuck on a ring, right? Just in case you wanna try this again at home, we prepared our strips and we make a line. For one, you make a line that divides the little piece of paper into two parts that are equal in width. And for the other one, you do it in a way that you have one part and then another part, one part that is one third and the other one is two thirds. So one part is half the size of the other two. I'm and just completely blown away by that. How, how, how different they are when you cut them out. Isn't that amazing? So um, yeah, so that is a really interesting phenomenon and that goes into a whole topic of research into uh, topology um, where you talk about things, if they are one dimensional, two dimensional, does this thing have one side or two sides? So uh, that is uh, another thing that, um, yeah, our brain is not necessarily equipped to think that this is intuitive. So uh, happy Maria's band making. And um, this brings us to Miss Casey's library picks. Um, you can easily find them if you go to our Science Night website. Um, Science Night, we have a section for each one and there is a link to the book list. And I brought some with me too. If you wanna do more like the Mobius fan that we just did, like those fun little crafts and experiments, we have optical illusion experiments for you. So you can flip through that and find other things like the Mobius fan. The Mobius fan is actually in here which is so fun. All right, and if you're looking more in or you want to do more of the optical illusions that we did at the beginning of the session, there is optical illusion magic. Actually, I was just flipping through and the duck uh -oh. bunny one is in here. That's right, the duck bunny one. So if you want to study that a little bit more. Casey, and then did you just call that the book, dunny? No, the duck, the duck bunny. Okay, because I think dunny is a great name for it too. So maybe we'll start calling it a dunny like this. What is that? The spiral circle. <laughs> the spiral. Yeah. So then, of course, I always have a fun book that I bring along. Nothing that the other two aren't fun, but I have Spider Man who has Mr. Mysterio. Yes. Shout out to Carlos here. Um, which is the master of illusion. So if you want to deep dive into a character that uh, does optical illusions, you can check out the Spider-Man books because a lot of those have the Mysterio in there. And of course, there's other ones on the side there. Awesome. Casey, can I just tell you something really, really cool? What's that? Um, you've chosen two books here by Michael Despezio. Uh-huh. Um, I just had a conversation with Michael earlier this week. No way. Yes, he was giving a presentation at a conference and a virtual conference. And I went into my Zoom. And of course, it shows my name whenever I turn my camera off. And he goes, is that my buddy Carlos from the Mag Lab? I'm like, oh, my God, Michael remembers me. Uh, <laughs> and, and not only did he remember me, but he remembers me. And we were able to have a conversation and he's going to, um, we have an email exchange going on. So I love the fact they have Michael Despezio books here. That's so fun. I love his stuff. No joke. So that's awesome too. Look at that, all that connection. That is so exciting. All right. Um, I just saw in the chat that some of you had some difficulty making the Mobius band. 
No worries at all. We will put the video of the science night on our MagLab YouTube channel. So you have the possibility to uh, make as many Mobius bands as you want and watch the video over and over again. Um, and it's perfectly normal when doing a science experiment that it will not work out the first time. So please don't uh, stop trying. Um, and who knows, maybe you learn something from, you know, the way your experiment turned out. This brings us to the end of this science night and also of this awesome Zoom science night uh, season. We will be back in September in some shape or form at the library in person or in Zoom land. We will keep you guys posted. Follow the Mac Lab by a social media. Check out um, the Educators Club if that fits into your um, work. Um, Mr. Carlos also has a bunch of things for you guys for the summer. So maybe this is a good moment to jump into that. Yeah, nobody leave yet because I got a couple of announcements um, besides the fact that I do know Michael Desfezio. Um, I do want to tell everybody that um, some of you were saying that you had the, um, trouble with the Mobius strip. And today I learned a very cool um, aspect of science that I want to share with you right now because part of science is the cycle um, that was described to me today as try, fail, cry, wail, try again. And I've learned from one of um, my scientist friends at the Mag Lab who left to go to another laboratory, um, but she told me about a time when she ran her experiment and watched on video as her experiment and the magnet exploded, leaving nothing behind. And, and Yulia's nodding because that's something that sometimes happens, unfortunately. Um, and, and she says that she watched many years of work just disappear and she cried and she got up the next day and started all over again. And that's just what we have to do sometimes. Um, Boys and girls, if you are a rising sixth grader through ninth grader, that means that you are in fifth through eighth grade right now, um, we want to invite you to participate in the MacLab summer camps. And I'm not going to brag about how wonderful they are because they are wonderful. Uh, I'm just going to let you all know that we, this is going to be virtual camps. This will be our first time ever running virtual camps. And we believe in the magic and the importance of hands-on materials. So we are going to buy the materials and then either ship it to your house, drop it off at your house, or you can come by the Mag Lab and pick up the materials. So this is not going to be just a Zoom um, uh, meeting every day. We're going to have hands-on materials. We're going to bring in specialists and scientists from all over the country. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to set up a shark scientist to come in and talk about sharks because who doesn't like sharks? Um, but we got a bunch of really cool stuff. We're going to talk about black holes and astronomy and, and some biology and some archaeology and a little bit of everything. So I'm going to put the link to all of the summer camps in the chat box. It's there right now. Um, this is important. You have less than two weeks to make your application, fill it out, and, and turn it into us. Everything's online. You don't have to print anything. You don't have to write anything. Everything can be done online. Um, the question in the chat is, does it cost money to go to the camps? Yes, it costs money to go to the camps because we got to get you t-shirts and materials. However, and this is very important, you listen to me right now, we always have scholarships for students who are not able to afford the camp. I have never and will never turn away somebody that wants to do science because of money. I promise you this. If you apply to the camp and you cannot afford the camp, we will find a way to get you in the camp. That is my promise to you all. So the links are there. We have our Camp Tesla, we have our Sci Girls, and we have our Sci Girls Coding Camp. Um, so all three of the applications are open. They close May 2nd, that's next Sunday. So you've got about 10 days to do your application. And like I said, apply, apply, apply. Don't worry about the finances. We'll figure that out later on. Awesome, thank you, Carlos. I wish I could join the summer camps. Well, let's not let's be honest. You do join our summer camps. You're one of the scientists that comes in and talks to our camps. That's great. Um, and That's if they great. haven't if they haven't reached out to you yet, they will. <laughs> so let me right. my, my customary goodbye. Um, but before I do, Yulia, Casey, anything you want to say? 
I just want you to thank everybody who stuck with us the entire season. I know we have a lot of repeat customers and fans. We love you all, and we're excited to see you guys back in the fall and for other MagLab and library events in the meanwhile. And I'll uh, turn it to Carlos with his closing remarks. Um, I do want to say that the person who is having troubles with the Mobius trip has got it. Way to Yay! go. <laughs> Happy Earth Day to everyone. And again, I want to remind everyone that the Mac Lab is taxpayer funded, which makes all of you stakeholders in our science. And so we want to thank the National Science Foundation for supporting us for over 25 years of being the Mac Lab in Tallahassee. Finally, I want to say for the last time, science needs all sorts of personalities in it, boys, girls, all sorts of ethnicities and backgrounds. Science is an opportunity for everyone to contribute. So I wanna to say to all of my nerds and geeks out there, stay true to who you are, stay nerdy and geeky. I've got all of my friends here with me. So good night, everybody. Thank you for joining us. And we hope to see you all in September or maybe even during the summer camps. Thank you, bye.